Waking up in his apartment at the dead of night, getting ready to go back to work as a night security, the protagonist kisses his sleeping wife goodnight, leaving the safety of his property. Date being October 22nd, the 35-year-old security guard goes to the designated building in order to start his shift. Reading a piece of note left over by his manager, Yamamoto, who has written about a security guard that used to work in the same building by the name of Kiego Ochigi. He seems to vanish one day with the manager believing he just quit without any notice. That's why the protagonist is hired as a replacement to watch over the building. The first task is to ask any employee staying overtime past 12 to go home, as there's a strange policy that no one should stay over after midnight, which means the time is 12 a.m. Asking one specific employee to leave, she displays her dominating and authoritative character by forcing the protagonist to exchange contact information as she fancies him. Despite the security guard having a girlfriend with child, as she comes across one of those who thinks they can get anything that they want. In the meantime, someone is still in the toilet, asking the protagonist not to turn the light off and close the doors as they will shut the lights when they're done. As the protagonist visits different floors to ensure everything is in order and all the employees are gone, he notices a dark figure resembling the stature and look of a woman when he notices her behind the door with a thin pane of glass staring directly at him with bloody red eyes. Opening the door, the figure disappears, making the protagonist dismiss it as a creature of his imagination as it's very late and he's feeling tired, especially as the building is not very well lit, making it difficult to tell between inanimate objects and people from a distance. Going up to a different floor, the power seems to be out. Going through a mysterious door that doesn't seem to belong in this building, the protagonist enters a yet stranger part of the building which is flooded by red liquid resembling blood. After finding a fuse in this mysterious room, the protagonist manages to turn the lights on. Checking surveillance, the security guard listens in to two employees talking about the previous security guard and how they had some sort of involvement in the previous guard quitting. Watching a camera feed live, the protagonist sees the female employee who forced them to exchange numbers talk with another colleague about actually having a boyfriend who is a security, whom she stole from another girl, being narcissistic and unapologetic saying she can do whatever she wants. All of a sudden, the lights go off, scaring both the employees. As they rush to the elevator, the friend stumbles with the narcissist dismissing her and using the elevator to save her own skin. As she goes to the intended floor, she enters a room which is followed by stabbing sounds and blood splatter, implying the narcissist died under the hands of a mysterious entity. The protagonist, horrified to what he just witnessed, notices a new note appearing in front of him on the desk, being written by the previous security guard, Kiego Ochigi, writing about something about a woman, something that appalled him so much that he decided to leave the building for good and quit his job. Despite the clear, dangerous situation the protagonist is in right now, he proceeds to attend to his tasks, as if some sort of mysterious force is making him do all of this. Going to the sixth floor, he notices the cleaning lady mopping a large pool of red liquid looking like blood, also being splattered all over the walls. The woman just staring at him without uttering as much of a word, the protagonist decides to leave the floor immediately and get to the seventh floor. This floor is severely neglected and run down as if being under renovation. The floor has creepy dolls in different parts, giving the protagonist the creeps as if the dolls are following and watching him. As he manages to find all the necessary missing buttons to access the elevator and go up, his theory of the dolls following him proves to be correct as when he gets into the elevator, all the dolls stand in front of the elevator with one even attempting to attack the protagonist. After all he experienced and with Witness, knowing something is wrong with this building, the protagonist still continues to complete his tasks. More bizarre and paranormal occurrences take place, with a voice blaming certain people for the bad things 
that are happening. After seeing a large scary entity up close, the protagonist goes back to the elevator, which in a surreal manner starts going deep underground, with blood decorating the walls of it. In the dark abyss of the deepest part of the building, the protagonist observes strange writings on the walls as if being incantations, with blood covering everything and a demonic looking woman harassing the protagonist. Scared for his life and wondering if this is nothing but a bad realistic nightmare, the protagonist finds a corpse in a locker which he takes a TV cable from and turns on the TV system, with a woman dressed in red directly looking at the camera recording her, saying that she loves someone when the footage is cut abruptly. Strangely, looking at the camera, this woman seems to be addressing the security guard, the protagonist, as if somehow him and Kiego are interchangeable, or one in two different bodies. That's only when the security guard decides to leave as soon as possible, realizing it's no good to stay here any longer. Being literally too deep in this dilemma, he gets chased by the uncanny red-eyed female figure when he runs away entering a room which ends with his seeming death. The post credit scene reveals that the security guard was in fact Kiego, the security guard who suddenly quit, therefore the interaction with the narcissist makes sense as she was the one who seduced Kiego, as she mentions, with her rocking buddy to cheat on his girlfriend. She even goes so far as explaining how she could easily win over the previous girlfriend as she deserves better. In the bathroom, a surreal scene as of a girl and a note written by Kiego talks about a certain female who did something unimaginable, which led to Kiego quitting his job. I believe Kiego leaving his girlfriend for the narcissist made the ex-girlfriend feel betrayed and broken to the point that she unfortunately took her own life. This caused Kiego to get overcome by guilt, hence the note, quitting his job as he couldn't deal with it. Eventually, Kiego is hunted by a woman in a red dress and a demonic red-eyed female entity, which leads to his presumable death, but we learn more about it in the second ending. If the protagonist manages to enter a code correctly and enters the elevator, he awakens in a hospital bed accompanied by his wife and daughter. The wife looks at the husband in sadness when the woman in red appears in the background menacingly looking at him when the story ends. I believe the woman dressed in red is no other than Kiego's ex-girlfriend who has been hunting him for cheating on her and that's why she looked at the camera directly saying that she loves him. Despite being implied that the protagonist in the beginning of the game is a new security guard, it turns out to be no other than Kiego himself who is reliving the time he was the security guard at the building, cheating with the narcissist on his ex-girlfriend which led to her untimely death. The surreal experience seems more like a nightmare than real life, which turns out to be something like a limbo or a purgatory, where the protagonist suffers for his misdeeds and actions while he is in a comatose state, evident from the second ending. It's not clear how he ended up that way though, but it seems he suffered some sort of a fall leading to head trauma. After many years quitting his job as a security guard, Kiego marries a different woman than the narcissist, creating a family with a child, trying desperately to move on from the past. But the past catches up with him, making him relive the twisted nightmarish version of the building. It's not clear how long he was in a coma, but possibly one full day, as the daughter didn't seem to age that much. Awakening in the hospital, believing it was all nothing but a bad nightmare, the woman in red, aka the ex girl friend reappears. This blank his torment was not just a bad nightmare, but a punishment for his actions and the consequences that followed. It's unclear if the ex-girlfriend will continue to hunt and torment Kiego, but maybe she quickly appeared to say that all of this was not just a figment of his imagination. Anyway folks, this has been my own theory. What are your thoughts and opinions about the story? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, you can stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host, Star, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.